Hello, this is Mike Kaufman, the author of the Motor Oil Bible, and uh, I'd like to just take a few moments to uh, give you an idea of what exactly is in the Motor Oil Bible, uh, so that if you were to download your copy, uh, you'd know exactly what you'd be getting. Now, uh, I have worked in the motor oil and uh, filtration industry for about 15 years, and uh, this book was initially written, at least the um, uh, the, the shorter uh, version of it was written about 12 years ago and uh, over the years it's received uh, a number of expansions uh, and uh, updates uh, the most recent one uh, being about a year ago now uh, you'll see here in the book uh, first of all very easy to navigate um, it's been set up so that in any PDF reader that you use which is what you'll need to use to read the book um, you will be able to open up a bookmarks uh, section and basically the bookmarks are just linked chapter headings and subheadings within the book that you can click on to take you to that portion of the book anytime you would like so for instance if I click on uh, base fluids and base stocks um, it will take me directly to that portion of the book and if I click on another link it will then take me to that portion of the book. So no matter where I am in the book at any time, as long as I have the bookmarks open, uh, I'll be able to access uh, whatever other portion of the book I would like to get to very quickly. Um, so that's the first thing. Now, uh, let me uh, also give you a rundown of just the chapters in the book so you know what kind of information you're going to find in here. Again, it's 370 pages, so there's a lot of information in here. Um, discusses the functions of a motor oil, uh, you know, what it needs to do and, and why that's important, uh, what goes into an oil, how, is a, how are oils manufactured, um, you know, what, what are the things that, that need to be done to, to create uh, a decent, uh, you know, motor oil. And um, as you scroll through here, uh, you know, it talks about the base fluids and the refining processes used, uh, the differences between petroleum and synthetic base stocks in terms of how they're created, the uh, chemical additive package. Um, then uh, we move on to a discussion of motor oil viscosity, which generally speaking, very few people really understand well. Even most mechanics that I talk to really don't understand uh, motor oil viscosity as well as they think they do. So uh, a rather uh, critical chapter within the book. Uh, also moves on to discuss motor oil technical specifications and uh, again this is another area of the book that um, there's a lot of confusion on that um, when you are deciding on a new motor oil for your vehicle uh, or you know any vehicle that you might have um, it pays to number one step back for a moment and and try to decide what are the critical areas of performance that you need from this oil because in every situation the answer to that question may be a little different depending on the age of the vehicle how you're driving it where you're driving it the climate and how long you want to keep it all those sort of things come into play and um, if you're not asking those questions then in large part uh, really you may kind of be shooting yourself in the foot because even if you purchase the quote-unquote best oil available uh, that doesn't necessarily make it the best oil for you um, primarily in terms of just its cost effectiveness for what it is that you're trying to accomplish you may be spending a great deal more money on your oil than you really need to to accomplish what you set out to accomplish so you really need to back up and say okay what do I need my oil to do once you've answered that question, and I'll discuss in this book how to go through that process of figuring out what you need your oil to do, then you need to figure out, okay, if these are the performance qualities that I need, then what technical specifications should I be looking at to make sure my oil has those performance characteristics and the best performance characteristics of those oils that are out there that I can afford to buy, um, you know, how do I determine that? Well, first you need to know what the technical specifications mean, how they're tested, um, you know, what numbers are better and what numbers are worse, which specifications are uh, useful and which specifications really don't tell you as much as you might think they do. 
Um, that's what this section of the book is really all about is explaining to you you know what do those specifications mean how are they tested what do the numbers mean how do you compare them are there some specifications that really are more or less useful than others you know that's really what that portion of the book is all about and uh, just as a kind of a side note you can always close up your list here um, to, to kind of move you down so the next section of the book discusses synthetic versus petroleum, the differences between them, uh, you know, why you might want one oil over another and, and what they can do for you and what they can't do for you. Um, why change oil? This is a topic that, that you know, people are going to discuss for the next two decades probably. Uh, even though the industry itself is moving much more toward uh, extended drains, there's still a lot of people that don't really understand when and why you should really change your oil and, and quite frankly when you shouldn't. Um, you know, some people, shorter mileage, you know, shorter change intervals are, are going to be a good thing. Other people can extend their oil drains significantly longer. And you need to know which of those categories you fit into and whether it's possible to move yourself from one category to another, depending on the products that you're using uh, for your lubrication and filtration. Uh, so this is just a discussion of you know why should you or shouldn't you change your oil and, and when should you change your oil. Um, now uh, from there uh, it moves on to it discusses first base stock breakdown and then additive depletion in terms of that same discussion uh, and then you move on to um, your contamination issues, so a discussion of, of filtration uh, issues. And um, once you get past that, once you get past your contamination issues, then uh, it goes on to discussing kind of the myth of you know needing to change your oil every 3,000 miles. And quite frankly, it really is a myth um, really for decades that hasn't necessarily been something that you had to do. Um, and more recently, virtually nobody needs to change their oil at 3,000 miles, almost no matter what the circumstances. Um, and this is really a discussion of that issue and uh, to kind of help you understand it. Uh, synthetic oil FAQs, different uh, frequently asked questions that people often will ask me regarding synthetic oil are answered in that chapter. Um, there's a section on oil filtration, um, which is really a critical component. It doesn't really matter how good your oil is. If you're not keeping it well filtered and keeping the contaminants out, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, your oil is probably lasting far, uh, far shorter than it ought to. You ought to be able to extend your drains further than that with better filtration. Um, in addition, the protection for your vehicle is much uh, less if you're using a lesser quality oil filter. Uh, this is a good section to help you determine what is a good quality oil filter and how do you find one. And it's not going to recommend any specific brands. It's not going to tell you this is what you should or shouldn't buy. It's really more so just a way for you to understand the issues involved so you can figure out you know what filter to buy. How do you compare the different testing uh, regimens that are used? Uh, because many times, you know, you'll be looking at two different brands of filters, and one of them uses this test, and one of them uses this test. Well, how do I compare the two, and how do I make an educated decision about which one to buy when they're not both testing on the same, uh, you know, test method? Um, OEM or aftermarket? Which should you choose and why? Uh, and again, it's not really going to tell you choose this or this. It's just going to give you the issues that you should be considering uh, so you can make an educated decision on your own. Also, a good discussion of air filtration and uh, specifically a, a discussion of some testing that was done um, completely third party, uh, had nothing to do with any of the filtration companies whatsoever, and some very interesting information in there that can be gleaned and, and kind of a, a real good discussion of that testing. Uh, also, bypass oil filtration. Many people still don't know what this is or why they might need it or not need it. Um, it's really just super high efficiency uh, oil filtration, which oftentimes will extend the life of your oil um, nearly indefinitely, depending on the oil that you're using, um, and will certainly extend the life of your vehicle considerably because it keeps your oil 
analytically clean at all times. Now there are a large number of companies out there that are currently producing these types of systems. They don't all work on exactly the same technology and so this chapter is really discussion of you know what is their usefulness, how can they be used, what are the different types of bypass filtration systems out there and then in addition to that um, what are some of the brands that are available out there? What type of filtration are they offering in this arena? What is going to be your cost both in the first year and also your second through fifth year? So you can get an idea of not only the short term expense of any of these vehicles, but or excuse me, uh, bypass systems, but also the long term expense as well. Um, so another uh, very useful chapter chapter on oil analysis, what is it and why do you need it, and then a chapter on a poor man's oil analysis. So if you uh, don't feel you're in a position that you can afford to pay for oil analysis results, uh, this is a cheap, uh, really almost free way for you to do oil analysis. In fact, could be free if you've got the items that you need on hand um, and we'll give you a pretty darn good idea of just how well your oil is doing without having to pay uh, a company to do that analysis for you. Also a discussion of oil monitoring systems uh, on the various vehicles that are out there, how they work, what they can tell you, what they can't tell you, and whether you should be trusting them uh, for your oil change interval recommendations. Uh, environmental issues, um, you know, this is really a fairly small portion of the book uh, and as much as I truly do believe that we are stewards of the environment and need to be good stewards of the environment, uh, by no means am I a tree hugger, so uh, you know, going to be some very practical aspects of the environmental issue and uh, you know, how to address that most effectively. Uh, we had some synthetic motor oil facts earlier. These are more generalized, uh, referring also to petroleum oils um, and uh, just some good uh, frequently asked questions and the answers to those. Uh, section on your transmission. Obviously you can protect your engine as well as you want, but if you're not protecting the transmission as well, uh, that's not really helping you a, a great deal because eventually the transmission is going to die and then your car is still not going to move. So uh, just a discussion of how to properly keep your transmission well lubricated so that it will last as long as possible. Uh, section on changing your oil. Many people reading this book may already know how to change oil, uh, but this section is really, uh, you know, it, it is going to lay out the procedure, but it's going to lay it out in a way that um, is, a, is a very significant time saver for a lot of people. A lot of tips, tricks, and tools that you can use uh, to make your oil changes easier, less messy, less cleanup, um, just some very practical ways that you can make that process a lot simpler. Section about uh, motorcycle oils. If you happen to own a motorcycle, this is a phenomenal uh, chapter of the book explaining a lot of uh, a lot of issues that there's a lot of confusion about, uh, and with regard to motorcycle oils, may very well help you save a considerable amount of money on your motor oil for your motorcycle because chances are you're probably overpaying for the quality of oil that you're getting. Um, so a, a very useful chapter for anybody that owns a motorcycle. And uh, honestly, for the most part, that's really the end of it. There's kind of some wrap-up uh, chapter down here, and then there's a uh, keyword index that um, if you can't find what you're looking for in the bookmarks or the table of contents, feel free to drop down to the end of the book here and uh, check out the keyword index. Just look for whatever keyword you're looking for and find the, uh, the uh, page of the book that it can be found on. And uh, again, at the beginning of the book, uh, you'll probably never need this because you have the bookmarks area over here, but there is a linked table of contents over here as well that you can click on any chapter and it'll take you directly to that area of the book. So. Um, 370 pages of extremely useful information if you have any interest at all in uh, trying to improve the lubricants or filters that you may using for your vehicle uh, or that you may use in your vehicles or even just trying to save some money. Uh, you may be using the best quality lube and filters out there uh, but depending on your circumstances that may be overkill and it may not really be helping you much. Uh, you might just be blowing a lot of extra money on something that you don't need. Then again your situation may completely warrant that and uh, you know 
you're not going to know until you really know all of the aspects about oil and filtration that you should be considering. So I hope that you'll consider uh, getting a copy of my book. And uh, if not, then I wish you all the best. I hope that um, you find the information that you're looking for to, to help protect your vehicles and equipment as best you can. Um, this just happens to be a very uh, quick, easy reference that you can find just about everything that you need in one place. So uh, take care and have a phenomenal day.